So in this video we're going to be talking about art in Athens at the cusp of the Archaic period and how it reflects and helps to bring about the changes and transformations in Athenian society. So art in the Archaic period is undergoing the kinds of uh, changes that we've already talked about with reference to the uh, Archaic period. In other words, there is a greater emphasis on variety, a greater emphasis on expression, a greater emphasis on the subjective and the personal. And this is more true in, in, uh, in poetry, visual art, uh, uh, has more to break free from. In other words, um, visual art uh, is uh, has direct connections to certain formulas of style that uh, the, the Greeks inherit from uh, both their ancestors and from the people that they are interacting with in the East, from Mesopotamia and Egypt and uh, bear in mind that the Greeks are aware that their society, their culture, is a newcomer. That uh, um, that Egyptian and Mesopotamian culture is is millennia older than the Greeks, and so um, as a result, uh, the uh, the Greeks start out the Archaic period willing to um, follow the lead of the East. In, in visual art, uh, and uh, the result of this is, um, is a, a, a sort of characteristic stiffness of expression, a, a characteristic um, formulaic approach um, that, is, um, that is sort of, uh, that is uh, originally sort of um, stiff-jointed in a sort of literal and metaphorical way. Uh, in, in sculptures and in uh, uh, and in um, relief um, and in frescoes and so forth like this, uh, we can see uh, a, a a gradual shift away from this. We've already seen examples of this with respect to the kouros and kore, um, the statues of, of young men and women that are used in votary and and uh, you know funereal rites. Um, we can also see it so something like this. This uh, this archaic relief uh, reflects both a certain expectation of the of the um, you know of the disposition of the of the male form that it uh, that it acts in a certain way and shows um, a uh, an effort to to move away from that in uh, uh, in in attempting to show uh, you know a little bit more fluidity. So this piece is, is sort of transitional in that respect. Uh, part of what uh, is involved in this discussion is that uh, uh, a lot of the visual art that would be seen on a day-to-day -day basis in the archaic period would be on pottery. Um, and so uh, pottery is, uh, is, is a little bit more limiting in this sense. Uh, pottery uh, is uh, the, the traditions especially the way things are represented in pottery, uh, make it more difficult to show facial expression in a tiny space and, and um, the, uh, the, the tradition is for to show people in profile. Uh, and so people are distinguished according to dress, a height, and, and, uh, uh, and, and other superficial characteristics, and the emphasis comes on the tableau uh, and uh, increasingly on action. Um, the, uh, the, the, the original form of pottery uh, decoration that uh, is prevalent in the archaic period is the black figure, uh, uh, black figure decoration, which uh, um, uses, uh, uh, uses color in the way that you see here. Uh, this is replaced by um, red figure, which uh, is uh, which is is developed as a distinctly Athenian form that spreads rapidly out from Athens from around 520 onward. Um, red figure uh, uh, it makes use of a great deal more versatility uh, and places a, a heavy emphasis on action, but also allows for a greater degree of, of nuance as well. And and so um, the the depictions of 
of um, famous scenes, famous uh, mythological events, and, and legendary figures, uh, which often decorates the uh, the, the amphorae and the uh, and the crater and other pottery forms. Uh, you know, these uh, are become more developed, become more sophisticated uh, at uh, at the. Uh, by the time we get to the end of the sixth century, and 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 Athens is entering the classical period, um, this is this is the period in which Athens is becoming more and more influential in the in in its art and in the expressiveness of its art. And so, uh, we see uh, depictions of of different kinds of. Of um, of ideas, not just uh, famous historical figures, but also um, certain aspects of everyday life, and uh, and shifts in in uh, ideas of composition, experiments in even if you are engaging in the the presentation of figures in profile with limited facial expression uh, you can still uh, invest a great deal of detail in the in the dress that is present um, in the action that is taking place and also the uh, the the balance of the uh, of the imagery so you know for example the artist that we see here is uh, is well known for creating uh, a balanced symmetrical presentations, uh, uh, tableaus that um, uh, um, that uh, involve interaction through the through the positioning of the figures involved. Uh, sculpture undergoes a a, a massive transformation um, as uh, as we go from as we get to the end of the sixth century uh, and into the uh, into the fifth. Um, one of the most famous of Athenian artists is. A, a sculptor called uh, Miron. Miron is uh, unfortunately most of his works are lost to us, but uh, we have a number of of ancient accounts that talk about the the brilliance of his sculpture and and uh, the the Minotaur that we see here that's from a a lost uh, composition that involves Theseus as well. Uh, the uh, the works of of Miron tend to be. Uh, um, tend to uh, uh, t tend to um, evoke um, a, a potential action, a potential fluidity, uh, in and, and not just at a, a at an overall level, like the um, like the the uh, the movement of 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 an arm to to throw, or uh, you know the the running of a figure, or something like this. Although one of his most famous works was. Um, uh, a um, you know a, a work of a that uh, depicted a famous Olympic runner uh, that was said to be one of the one of the best works of sculpture that many observers had ever seen, but also at the at the at the more you know subtle level and at, and at a, on a smaller scale, uh, in a figure like this you can uh, you can feel the uh, the 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 um, uh, the 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 surface of the of the marble as if it were skin you can you can see the uh, the the potential for you know the rippling of the abdominals or the the blinking of the eye the uh, um, the 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 marble becomes a, a, you know translucent like a, um, like the exteriors of of living beings themselves uh, another famous work uh, that we don't have anymore, we have only through Roman reproduction, is, is the discus thrower, Discobolus. Uh, and once again, the, um, the emphasis here is not just on the, the motion that is about to take place, but also on, uh, on the, uh, the motion and, and, uh, and vibrancy. Uh, at the at the at the micro level, at the at the level of the the muscles, at the level of uh, you know of of, uh, of 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 the of the possibility, the capability of 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 the human body itself, and and of the male form especially. Um, 
uh, what's uh, what's uh, particularly noteworthy about all of this is that uh, as Athens uh, uh, experiments with all of this artistic expression, artistic expression is by and large public. Some of the artwork that we're seeing is is designed to be exhibited in in private homes of the of the most wealthy, but uh, most of the art that we're talking about is is art that is part of the public experience. This is particularly and especially true when we're talking about uh, uh, you know architecture, but also uh, public sculptures and and reliefs that are present on all of the important buildings that are surrounding the agora that are part of the daily experience of the ordinary populace. Uh, and uh, these are, are depicting important elements of history and mythology, um, but they are also exhibiting the capabilities of, of the human figure and, and uh, in, intended to inspire uh, people to understand the, the possibilities of um, what can be accomplished through artistic expression. And so, uh, even when you are uh, talking about, um, you know, memorials and and uh, and 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 gravesite uh, monuments, a great deal of effort uh, uh, takes place goes into um, eliciting what art is capable of doing. In this case, uh, the the you know an effort is made for this very famous uh, grave stele to uh, evoke um, you know the the essence of this girl who died and and uh, the kinds of things that made her happy a moment uh, that exemplifies and 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 crystallizes this girl. Uh, and 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 makes her, uh, you know, makes that moment of life still present amongst uh, its observers uh, to 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 permanently endow uh, life on a moment. Um, this is what the the um, uh, what uh, excited the Greeks about the possibilities of, of expression. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that uh, it, what we have now is uh, is uh, a sculpture that has been weathered, sculpture that, in which um, the the paint and, and other decorations that the that the Greeks and and all uh, of the ancients used with reference to their art uh, has uh, has gone away, and so. Um, it's difficult for us to say, uh, you know, the extent to which the uh, the the paintings would have looked something like this. We have, you know, uh, very little way of knowing. This is so a restoration like this uh, looks somewhat gaudy to us. We don't know exactly what uh, the uh, what the sculptures and uh, and and artwork of the Greeks look like in in everyday life. Uh, other than to say that the sculptures were not pure white, and so any, you know, poetry that you may be moved to read or write about the purity that is embraced by the whiteness of Aphrodite's bosom, uh, in uh, you know some sculpture that you're looking at, uh, it's important to remember that uh, this was not uh, the way that it would have originally been viewed by the Athens. There would have been some color, whether it was this intense, uh, you know, is is a subject of, of great debate among the. Uh, Art historians of ancient Greece. Um, likewise, architecture, you know, architecture, of course, is the most public of public arts, and uh, something here like the uh, like the Parthenon, which was built in the mid uh, uh, in the in the middle of, of the the heyday of, of classical Athens and uh, in the mid fifth century, uh, would have exemplified um, you know the majesty that art is capable of demonstrating. Um, and would have included uh, uh, a good deal of, of sculpture uh, in the in the frieze above the uh, above the pillars, um, much of which has also been reconstructed. Uh, images of the of the gods and, and mythological figures uh, within you know would have been a sculpture of Athena. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, you can uh, you can uh, go and and visit. And the reproduction of the Parthenon, which uh, has been built in Tennessee, uh, which contains uh, the the statue that is no longer there in Athens, and and attempts to elicit what uh, what this looks like, and uh, this is probably the only reason to watch the uh, the first Percy Jackson movie. 
Um, the other, so we've already talked about lyric poetry. We've already talked about how lyric poetry is a transition from um, the uh, the top down uh, uh, objective poetry of of, um, of epic poetry of the Dark Age into the subjective personal poetry uh, of the Archaic period. Um, that uh, this is expressed uh, through Sappho and uh, uh, you know Artemidorus and, and other. Um, important figures of lyric poetry. Uh, uh, the, the effect of lyric poetry is, is part of a broader phenomenon that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, empowers speech, uh, in particular in Athens. So we see lyric poetry throughout the Aegean world, but uh, oratory becomes more and more important in Athens as the citizen body is, uh, is more empowered and the, uh, the ability and, and uh, need to convince them of what is necessary through reason and speech and rhetoric becomes an art. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is important not merely in terms of speeches involving public policy, but also uh, uh, you know oratory and and sort of the written form of oratory, written rhetoric uh, that is involved in attempting to uh, use expression in order to influence uh, social customs. And so we see this taking place with respect to history. Um, uh, after the Persian Wars, the story of the Persian Wars is written down uh, and, and performed in public readings by Herodotus in order to uh, um, help people to understand why this war occurred and what it means about uh, being Greek and how uh, the, the Greek culture compares to uh, other cultures uh, uh, elsewhere in the world, not just the Persian, but also the Egyptian and so forth. Uh, um, you know, this is this is writing for a, a you know for a driven purpose, just like oratory, just like poetry, uh, and you know from this we also get the movement that brings us uh, drama and comedy uh, as as, uh, as 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 art designs um, to bring about. Uh, public change through either the reinforcement or the attack on uh, customs, morals, and beliefs of the entire Athenian populace. And uh, we'll see how that plays out in coming weeks. And so uh, for now, that's that period. Um, this, is, this is the period in which Athens is becoming more and more influential in, the, in, in its art and in the expressiveness of its art. And so uh, we see uh, depictions of, of different kinds of of um, of ideas, not just uh, famous historical figures, but also um, certain aspects of everyday life, and uh, and shifts in in uh, ideas of composition, experiments in even if you are engaging in the the presentation of figures in profile with limited facial expression, uh, you can still uh, invest a great deal of detail in the in the dress that is present, um, in the action that is taking place, and also the uh, the the balance of the uh, of the imagery. So you know, for example, the artist that we see here is uh, is well known for creating. Uh, a balanced symmetrical presentations, uh, uh, tableaus that um, uh, um, that uh, involve interaction through the through the positioning of the figures involved. Uh, sculpture undergoes a a, a massive transformation um, as uh, as we go from as we get to the end of the sixth century uh, and into the uh, into the fifth. Um, one of the most famous of Athenian artists is. A, a sculptor called uh, Miron. Miron is, uh, unfortunately, most of his works are lost to us, but uh, we have a number of, of ancient accounts that talk about the, the brilliance of his sculpture. And, and uh, the, the Minotaur that we see here that's from a, a lost uh, composition that involves Theseus as well, uh, the, uh, the works of, of Miron tend to be uh, um, tend to uh, uh, t tend to um, evoke um, a, a potential action 
uh, potential fluidity uh, in and, uh, and not just at a, a at an overall level like the um, like the the, uh, the movement of, of of an arm to, to throw or uh, you know the the running of a figure or something like this although one of his most famous works was um, uh, a um, you know a, a work of a that uh, depicted a famous Olympic runner uh, that was said to be one of the one of the best works of sculpture that many observers had ever seen, but also at the at the at the more you know subtle level and at, and at a, on a smaller scale, uh, in a figure like this you can uh, you can feel the uh, the 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 um, uh, the 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 surface of the of the marble as if it were skin you can you can see the t it, it, it tend to um evoke um a, a potential action uh potential fluidity uh in and, uh, and not just at a, a at an overall level like the um like the the uh, the movement of 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 an arm to to throw or uh you know the the running of a figure or something like this although one of his most famous works was um uh, a um, you know a, a work of a that uh, depicted a famous Olympic runner uh, that was said to be one of the one of the best works of sculpture that many observers had ever seen, but also at the at the at the more you know subtle level and at, and at a, on a smaller scale, uh, uh, in a figure like this you can uh, you can feel the uh, the 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 um, uh, the 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 surface of the of the marble as if it were skin you can you can see the uh the the potential for you know the rippling of the abdominals or the the blinking of the eye the uh um, the 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 marble becomes a, a you know translucent like uh, um like the exteriors of of living beings themselves uh, another famous work uh, that we don't have anymore, we have only through Roman reproduction, is, is the discus thrower, Discobolus. Uh, and once again, the, um, the emphasis here is not just on the, the motion that is about to take place, but also on, uh, on the, uh, the motion and, and, uh, and vibrancy. Uh, at the at the at the micro level at the at the level of the the muscles at the level of uh, you know of of, uh, of 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 the of the possibility the capability of 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 the human body itself and and of the male form especially um uh, what's uh, what's uh, particularly noteworthy about all of this is that uh, as Athens uh, uh, experiments with all of this artistic expression, artistic expression is by and large public. Some of the artwork that we're seeing is is designed to be exhibited in in private homes of the of the most wealthy. But uh, most of the art that we're talking about is is art that is part of the public experience. This is particularly and especially true when we're talking about uh, uh, you know architecture, but also uh, public sculptures and and reliefs that are present on all of the important buildings that are surrounding the agora that are part of the daily experience of the ordinary populace, uh, and uh, these are are depicting important elements of history and mythology, um, but they are also exhibiting the. Uh, what's uh, what's uh, particularly noteworthy about all of this is that uh, as Athens uh, uh, experiments with all of this artistic expression, artistic expression is by and large public. Some of the artwork that we're seeing is is designed to be exhibited in in private homes of the of the most wealthy. But uh, most of the art that we're talking about is is art that is part of the public experience. This is particularly and especially true when we're talking about uh, uh, you know architecture, but also uh, public sculptures and and reliefs that are present on all of the important buildings that are surrounding the agora that are part of the daily experience of the ordinary populace, uh, and uh, these are are depicting important elements of history and mythology, um, but they are also exhibiting the capabilities of of the human figure and and. Uh, intended to inspire 
uh, people to understand the, the possibilities of um, what can be accomplished through artistic expression. And so uh, even when you are uh, talking about um, you know memorials and and uh, and 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 gravesite uh, monuments a great deal of effort uh, uh, takes place goes into um, e eliciting what art is capable of doing uh, in this case uh, the the you know an effort is made for this very famous uh, grave stele to uh, evoke um, you know the the essence of this girl who died and and uh, the kinds of things that made her happy a moment uh, that exemplifies and 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 crystallizes this girl uh, and 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 makes her uh, you know makes that moment of life still present amongst uh, its observers uh, to 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 permanently endow uh, life on a moment um, this is what the the um, uh, what uh, excited the Greeks about the possibilities of, of expression uh, the other thing to bear in mind of course is that uh, it, what we have now is uh, is a, a sculpture that has been weathered sculpture that, in which um, the the paint and other decorations that the that the Greeks and and all uh, of the ancients used, with reference to their art, uh, has uh, has gone away. And so, um, it's difficult for us to say, uh, you know, the extent to which the uh, the the paintings would have looked something like this. We have you know uh, very little way of knowing. This is so a restoration bait among the uh, art historians of ancient Greece. Um, likewise, architecture, you know, architecture, of course, is the most public of public arts, and uh, something here like the uh, like the Parthenon, which was built in the mid, uh, mid uh, uh, in the in the middle of, of the the heyday of, of classical Athens, and uh, in the mid fifth century, uh, would have exemplified um, you know the majesty that art is capable of demonstrating. Um, and would have included uh, uh, a good deal of, of sculpture uh, in the in the frieze above the uh, above the pillars, um, much of which has also been reconstructed. Uh, images of the of the gods and and mythological figures uh, within you know would have been a sculpture of Athena. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, you can uh, you can uh, go and and visit. And the reproduction of the Parthenon, which uh, has been built in Tennessee, uh, which contains uh, the the statue that is no longer there in Athens, and and attempts to elicit what uh, what this looks like, and uh, this is probably the only reason to watch the uh, the first Percy Jackson movie. Um, the other, so we've already talked about lyric poetry. We've already talked about how lyric poetry is a transition from um, the uh, the top down uh, uh, objective poetry of of, um, of epic poetry of the Dark Age into the subjective personal poetry uh, of the Archaic period. Um, that uh, this is expressed uh, through Sappho and uh, uh, you know Artemidorus and, and other. Um, Important figures of lyric poetry. Uh, there, uh, the the effect of lyric poetry is is part of a broader phenomenon that uh, that uh, you know empowers speech, uh, in particular in Athens. So we see lyric poetry throughout the Aegean world, but uh, oratory becomes more and more important in Athens as the citizen body is uh, is more empowered and the uh, the ability and and uh, need to to convince them of what is necessary through reason and speech and rhetoric becomes an art, um, and uh, this is uh, this is important not merely in terms of speeches involving public policy, but also uh, uh, you know oratory and and sort of the written form of oratory, written rhetoric uh, that is involved in attempting to. Uh, use expression in order to influence uh, social customs. And so we see this taking place with respect to history. Um, after the Persian Wars, the story of the Persian Wars is written down uh, and, and performed in public readings by Herodotus in order to 